Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet, brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. Chesterfield king size at the new low price and Chesterfield regular. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. You get a call that a hold-up man has hit one of the larger auction houses in your city. You have a good description of him. Your job, find him. What a pair. What a buy. They're talking about Chesterfield king size. At the new low price. And Chesterfield regular. They're the quality twins. Either way you like them. You get the same highest quality, the same low nicotine, the same wonderful taste and mildness, a refreshing smoke every time. Yes, the Chesterfield you smoke today is the best cigarette ever made, and it's America's most popular two-way cigarette. So buy a carton today. King-size Chesterfield at the new low price, or Chesterfield regular. What a pair they are. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment... Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, February 1st. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Chief of Detective Stad Brown. My name's Friday. I was on my way into the office, and it was 8.07 a.m. when I got to room 27A. Robbery squad room. Morning, Joe. Hi. The rain let up? No. It's still coming down. Doesn't look like it's going to stop either. No. Sure got it out in the valley. Well. Anything in the book for us? No. Talk to Skipper. He's got a couple of things for us to check out. Uh huh. What do we got, do you know? A uh, bank job last week. Stats office came up with a list of possibles. We're supposed to help check them out. All right. Here's the list. A couple on there we know, too. Mm hmm. When did Rocky get out? A couple of months ago. Can't stay out of trouble, can he? I called the adult authority. They say he's got a job working nine to six. Well, he'd still find a way to get out. Yeah. Now let's get on it. Okay. You think I'll need my rubbers? What? My rubbers. You think I'll need them? I don't know. They're your feet. It's raining pretty hard. Well, I guess I better take them. Fail gets sore if she finds out I'm not wearing them. I didn't hear you. I say fail gets sore if she finds out I'm not wearing them. Oh. I get home, she looks at the soles of my shoes. If they're wet, she knows I left the overshoes in the locker. She gets real hacked, though. So. Yeah. You gonna put them on now? Yeah, I have to walk outside, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure hard to get on. Are you about finished there? Yeah. I want to see Danny before he leaves. What well, is it, something special? No, I heard that he had a set of golf clubs for sale. I thought maybe I'd look at them. Are you gonna start playing golf? No. I thought maybe I'd take a look at them. You know, I've been thinking maybe I ought to do something like that. Some kind of hobby. Golf isn't too expensive, is it? Fishing, Joe. What? You ought to take up fishing. That's for you. It is. Sure, fishing. Out in a boat, fighting the unknown. With golf, you hit a ball and you know where it's going. No, not me. <laughs> you know what I mean. With golf, you kind of know what's going to happen. But with, with fishing, there's always that mystery of what's going on at the other end of your line. You never know. Yeah. No, you don't, Joe. You never know what's going to take the bait. Might be a big school of white sea bass or yellowtail down there. Might even be a school albacore. No, fishing's for you, Joe. You think so, do you? Well, it's a little early yet, but you just hang on, old buddy, and tell you what, I'll take you out with me this year. Show you how it's done. No, I don't think so. I heard about your fishing. What do you mean? Oh, Gene Patrick was telling me about how you robbed the bait tank, strung up the horse sardines, and took them home. He's jealous, Joe. He is. Uh... Yeah, he wanted them. Hot shot, I'll get it. <sighs> You better hurry up. We got one to roll on. Yeah? Auction house out on Wilshire Boulevard. Huh? They were just hit. Eight 
8.37 a.m., we arrived at the Charles Kane Auction Gallery. It was a large Spanish-type building located on the corner of Wilshire Boulevard and Gregory Drive. A radio card answered the call, and the officers from the unit were taking reports. The policeman at the door told us that his partner was making a check of the neighborhood to see if he could come up with any information for us. An ambulance had arrived, and the man at the door told us that the attendant was in the store taking care of one of the victims. We went in and talked to him. Hey, watch it, huh? Feels like he stole my head in. Oh, sorry, Mr. Kane. Are you fellas officers? Yeah, that's right. Friday and Smith, Central Robbery. All right, if we talk to him. Sure, I'm almost finished here. Sure, you can talk to me. Go ahead, I'll tell you. All right, sir. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Charles Kane. This is my place. I'm the one that was robbed. Yes, sir, we understand. This is Miss Morgan. I know these are policemen. Uh, how do you do? How are you? Where's your other cops? Sir? Other fellas, the ones in the police car, where'd they go? Well, they're outside, Mr. Kane. Oh, you fellas are the guns, eh? What's that, sir? The guns, the big ones. You know, the ones who's going to handle it? Well, I guess you could say that. Yeah, well, suppose you want me to tell you all about it, huh? Yes, sir, if you would, please. Yeah, been in the auctioning business a long time. This is the first time a thing like this has ever happened. First time. Uh -huh. Came in this morning early. Came in to check the consignment from Santa Barbara. Loading new stuff. Only it's old. Yes, sir. We bought it up. Supposed to be here this morning. I came in the office. Uh, yeah, yeah, right in here. Fellow was standing back at the door. As soon as I came in, he clouded me on the head. Whacked me a good one. Hey, 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 wait. Hey, take it easy with that bandage, will you? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Feel like that fellow Ichabod. Who's that? Ichabod. You know, from Washington Irving. Uh, Ichabod Crane. Fellow rode around carrying his head under his arm. Yes, yeah, sir. Feel like I could do that. Uh, grand writer, Irvin. Read almost all his stuff. Grand. Yes, sir. What time did you come in? Yeah, grand. Oh, uh, it must have been about 7.45. Wonder if you can give us a description of the man. Sure. Don't you want me to tell you the rest of the story first? Well, if we can get a description of the man, Mr. Kane, we can get a broadcast out on him. Yeah. He robbed the safe, too, you know. Yes, sir, we understand. Cleaned it right out. How tall was the man, sir? Oh, about six foot two. Big fella. Well, might even been bigger. How about his weight? Big there, too. Maybe a couple hundred pounds. Did you see the man, Miss Morgan? Well, yes, he was here when I came in. Yeah, but I'm the one he hit. Well, he was back here with Mr. Kane when I came in. The man must have just hit him. Did you get a pretty good look at him? Yes, sir. Yeah, he hit me. He gave me a real whack right on the head. Yes, sir. This fellow's covered it all up with bandages. You'd be able to see it. A real whack. Yes, sir, we understand. I think that'll take care of it, Mr. Kane. Well, huh? Yes, sir. I suggest you see your doctor, though. Yeah, why? We usually recommend it, sir. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, young fellow. Yes, sir. How about the man's coloring, Mr. Kane? Uh, that ambulance fellow been real nice. Yes, sir. Can you tell us about the man who held you up? Light. Uh, light complected. Did he wear glasses? No, didn't have glasses. Well, he had them on when I saw him. Yeah? Well, he didn't when he whacked me. What kind of glasses were they, ma'am? Well, they're the ones with the plastic rim, sort of a light color. Must have taken them off when he hit me. What was he wearing? Gray suit. Business suit. Gray. Was he clean-shaven, do you remember? Well, yes, he had a, a dark beard, though. Real heavy, but he was clean-shaven. I'll get this out, Joe. Right. Uh, did he have any accent when he talked, Mr. Kane? No, just hauled off and hit me as soon as I came in the door. Didn't say a word. Just whacked me on the head. Did he speak to you, Miss Morgan? Well, yes, he did. He told me to keep quiet and nothing would happen. Did you notice anything in his speech? No, he talked just like anybody else. Okay, you called him, Frank? Yeah. Miss Morgan? Yes, sir. What time did you get in this morning? Oh, it must have been about eight, maybe a couple of minutes after. Did you see the hold-up man when he came in? No, not right away. He wasn't out in the gallery. Uh-huh. I came into the office here. This is where I work most of the time. That's when I saw him. He was standing right over there. Mr. Kane was on the floor, and the robber was standing next to him. I guess he just hit Mr. Kane. Uh -huh. What did he say to you? Well, I told you. He said for me to keep quiet, and nothing would happen to me. Did he say anything else? No, no, he didn't. Didn't say much to me either. Just whacked me. Would you know the man if you saw him again, Miss Morgan? Yes, yes, I would. So would I. All right, sir. Well, we'd like both of you to come downtown and look at some pictures, if you would. Oh, got him, eh? Fast work. Well, no, sir. No, we haven't got him in custody yet, but we may have a picture of him downtown. Yeah? How'd that be? Well, if he's done this kind of thing before and he's been arrested, we'd have a record on him. Oh, yeah. Mr. Kane. Yeah? What kind of a burglar alarm system do you have here in the store? Oh, it's uh, right there on the window. Mm-hmm. Hey, you see those little strips of foil? Electricity runs through them. They get broke and it rings the bell out in front of the store. You're not on a system, though, are you? Huh? Oh, no, no. All these figures that if the bell went off, the cops would be here soon enough. I see. He must have found out some way to turn the thing off, though. Didn't ring at all. I'd heard it if it had. I'd heard it sure. Do either of you people smoke? Yeah, both of us. Got out the broadcast, Joe. Good. Call the crime lab. They're on the way. All right, fine. I took another look at the front door. Whoever broke in sure knew his job real clean. 
You got anything? Well, we don't know yet. Either of you two people smoked this morning here in the office? Not me. Sure could use a cigarette, though. Calm me down. There you are, Mr. Kane. How about you, miss? Thank you. Why all these questions about smoking? I want to know if you're going to catch that man. There was over $1,200 in that safe, and I had a couple of hundred on me. He took all that. What you asking all these silly questions for? Well, there's some cigarettes here on the floor. Looks like the hold-up man must have waited for you two to get here. Yeah, probably did. Broke into the safe and then waited for me to come in. Dirty sneak. What do you got, Joe? Some paper matches here. Might be something. Yeah? And take a look at them. Yeah. Huh, up there. Some print on that one. You read what it says? 23 miles to Wilming. The rest of it's burned off. Probably Wilmington. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, you got something? A clue? Oh, we don't know yet, sir. Here's another one, John. Can you read it? Yeah. This one's almost whole. Only the tip's been burned. What's it say? Well, it says 14 miles to Santa Monica. What was it? 14 miles to Santa Monica. Look like matches from a motel, maybe a hotel, something like that. Might be a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. You guys won't have any trouble at all. Getting the fella, I mean. Sir? Yeah, simple. Just find a place that's 23 miles from Wilmington, 14 miles from Santa Monica. Don't you get it? Find that place and your man will be waiting for you. You get it? Yes, sir. Yeah, simple. Find that place. Your man will be there. Nine twenty a.m. The crime lab arrived and went over the place. The burned matches and the cigarette butts were retained for evidence. Pictures were taken of their position relative to the safe. We continued to question the two victims. From their stories, we were able to piece together what had happened. They were both asked to go with us to the robbery division to check through the mug books for an identification of the holdup man. From their descriptions of the man, we were able to come up with an accurate idea of what he looked like. We contacted the artist up in the crime analysis division and asked him to start a composite drawing of the thief. The crime lab called and gave us additional information on the matches. From the distances printed on them, we were able to get an idea where the original matchbook might have come from. The intersection of the lines was in the Hollywood area. 3.15 3.15 p.m., we drove over to talk to the manager of the company who had made the matches, a Mr. Tom Holger. Come on in. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sit down. All right, sir, fine. Now, what can I do for you? We're police officers, Mr. Holger. My name's Friday. This is my partner, Frank Smith. How do you, How do, you do, sir? Well, what can I do for you? <laughs> I hope it's nothing I've done wrong. No, sir, nothing like that. We'd like some help if you can give it to us. Sure, always glad to cooperate with the police. I never know when I'm going to need them. All right, sir. We have some... Matches here, Mr. Holger. We understand they were made by your firm. Oh, matches, huh? Yes, sir. We'd like to know who they were made for, if you could tell us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we made them. Uh-huh. Sort of an exclusive design. Can you tell us who you made them for? No, I'll check the book. Probably have them in there. Now, let me see. I think that's model uh, 4XY892. Yes. Yes, here's the book. It's probably in here. Huh. A lot of matches. Oh, yes, we make quite a few. They all differ? Most of them. Some of the same. You know, a customer sees a sample he likes and orders the same thing for his business. We make a few changes so that it fits the line he's in, you know. Uh-huh. Neither one of you fellows is collectors, are you? Big pardon? Collectors. Either one of you guys save matchbooks? Oh, no, sir. Neither one of you? No, sir. Well, it's a good hobby. I've got quite a collection. Yes, maybe uh, six, uh, maybe 7,000. That many? Oh, yes, yes. Some of the collectors have more. I've only been saving for about five years. Uh, well, working in a place like this makes collecting easier, huh? Oh, no, you can't do that. Huh? Well, I can't take them out of these samples. I can't. Oh, no, no, that wouldn't do at all. You have to find them. Wouldn't be fair to take advantage of my position to get the books. Oh, no, not fair at all. Wouldn't? Oh, no, no, I take trips. Drive all over to get ones. Last summer, I went back to the Smithsonian Institute. Now, they've really got a collection. Oh, it's just beautiful. Is that right? Oh, my, yes, beautiful. Had a wonderful trip. Got a lot of new books. <laughs> my wife did very good, too. Came back with two shopping bags full of sugar. How's that? Sugar. She saved sugar cubes. You know, with the wrappings that tell where the cubes came from? Oh, oh yeah. Yes, sir, I've seen them. I know what you She mean. saves them. Two shopping bags full. <laughs> Wonderful trip. About the matches, sir. I wonder if you could tell me. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Well, here you are. I think this is it. Now, uh, let me see the ones you have. That's here, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Now, let me see. Oh, uh-huh. same one. Yes, that's it. 
You, you know, we have guys coming in here all the time to see if they can't get some books for their collection. I won't go for it, though. The dodges they use. <laughs> some of the stories would really make you laugh if you didn't know what they were trying to do. Yes, sir. How about these matchbooks here? What? Oh, well, I try to tell them. I go out and get the matches fair. Don't come around here and try to do things the easy way. Go out and get them fair. That's what I tell them. Yes, Can you sir. tell us where these matches came from? Please? Oh, all over the world. They come from all over. No, sir. The matches we brought in. Hmm? Please. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, oh, my. No, no. These came from Hollywood. I meant the others, the ones for collecting. Yes, sir. Can you tell us where in Hollywood? Well, let me see. Here, there's... Uh... Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six... Oh, six places that use these matches have a different cover on them, of course. Well, anyway, you can tell us where these particular matches came from? Well, not when they're burned. If I could see the color of the head, I might be able to tell. The big part? Well, we put a different color head on the matches. Oh, I see. Different place, different color. Mm -hmm. Any way you could tell from these, though? Well, could be done. Take some time. Uh -huh. Analyze the burned portion. Tell what the chemical content is in the head. Tell that way. Take some time, though. About how long? Well, a couple of hours, maybe a little longer. Well, how much would knowing the color help? Well, you can see here in the book. There are two with red heads, two with green, and two with white. Be able to narrow it down to two for you. Well, that's not necessary, Mr. Holger. Be glad to do it. Well, we'll drop the matches by our crime lab. They can run the test, and then we'll call you back. All right, that'll be fine. wonder if you could give us the address of the places that use the matchbooks. Oh, sure, I got them right here. I'll make a copy for you. Sure, appreciate it. Well, no trouble at all. Say, I was just thinking. What's that, sir? You fellas wouldn't like to start a collection, would you? I could let you have a few books to get you started. Well, sir. Wouldn't be cheating. Just a few. No, sir. Thanks. Just the same. Well, take some of these along anyway. Loads of fun. Huh? Sugar cubes all the way from Des Moines. We got the list of places using the type of book matches found at the scene of the robbery. We told Tom Holger that we'd be back if we needed any more help, and then we left. 5.30 p.m. We called the office and talked to Sergeants Murphy and Rafferty. We gave them the addresses of the three motels and asked them to check them out. 6.46 p.m. We started to check out the three motels on our list. The rain continued to fall. The Weather Bureau's report indicated that it would keep up for another 12 hours. At the first two places, we got no new information on the holdup man. 7.29 p.m. We checked at the last place on our list. Yeah? Police officers would like to talk to you, sir. Oh, sure. Come on in. Thank you. Boy, it's sure coming down, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, what's all this about? Something wrong? No, we'd just like your help. Uh, I think I can do. Say, you guys like a cup of hot coffee? Take the chill out of your bones. No, sir. No, thanks. Got it already. Won't be no trouble. No, sir. Thanks. Just the same. Well, how about your partner? No, thanks. All right. Now, what can I do for you? I'd like for you to take a look at a picture here and tell us if you've seen the man. Sure. Frank, you got the sketch there? Oh, yeah. Got it right here. A little wet. Uh-huh. Guess some water got in the pocket. Yeah. What do you want this guy for? Something special? We'd like to talk to him. Yeah, sure. I didn't mean to pry. Just wonder if it was a big job or maybe a bad check, something like that. Uh-huh. There you are. Seen him before? This is description down here at the bottom? That's right. Robbery, huh? Yes, sir. Big deal. You seen him? I'm well, not sure. Description fit a lot of people. Uh-huh. Does it fit anyone registered here? Yeah. At least four guys. Listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. They've got the taste and they've got mildness, millions all agree. They're low in nicotine and they're the highest quality. Thirty years' research went into this great cigarette. So here is all you say to get the finest smoking yet. Chester feels for me, Chester feels for me. You just say it's Chester feels for me. Remember, friends, Chesterfield is tested and approved by 30 years of scientific tobacco research for the taste and mildness you want. Next time, say, Chesterfield's for me. Buy a carton of king-size Chesterfield at the new low price or Chesterfield regular. What a pair they are. They're best for you. <laughs> Seven thirty-six p.m. We continued to talk to the manager of the motel. He went through the registration cards of the four men who answered the description of the holdup man that we were after. We were able to eliminate two of them. 
In the manager's company, we left to check out the other two occupants. Cabin number 26 was registered to a John Keller. He had given his address as 1624 Shannon Street, San Francisco. There's nobody here. You want me to open the door? Better let us do it, huh? Figure he might give you some trouble? We don't know, sir. I hope not. I run a quiet place here. I like to keep it that way. All right. Would you just stand over there, sir? Sure. Not here. When did you see him last? Well, I didn't see him at all today. Last time was yesterday evening. Came by to see if there's any phone messages for him. You say who was going to call him? No. Kind of impressed me like he was just asking to kill time. Uh -huh. Better check the closet, huh? Yeah, I didn't check it good at first. I will now. Uh -huh. How long has this Keller been here? A mm, couple of days, that's all. Just a couple of days. I didn't know he'd cause any trouble. I wouldn't let him in if I'd have known that. Sorry, right, sir. Joe? Yeah? See you, man? Sure. You got something? Yeah. Pile of dirty laundry here. Take a look. Yeah, burglar tools. The burglar tools were not disturbed until they could be checked for fingerprints. We asked the manager of the motel to go back to the office and act as if nothing had happened when the suspect came in. He told us the motel had a switchboard telephone and we asked him to ring us in the event the office called. I called the city hall and told them where we were. I also asked that another team of men be sent out to help us with a stakeout. Then Frank and I settled down to wait for John Keller. The rain kept up. We waited. 8, 8.30, no sign of the suspect. The office called to say that they were sending Stewart and Creasy out to relieve us at midnight. 9.30, 10, 15 p.m. Well, I sure wish we could smoke. Yeah. Wonder what he's doing out in a night like this. Uh, sure coming down, isn't it? Yeah. Hope Faye and the kids are all right. Is there anything wrong? No, but once in a while when it rains real heavy like this, the storm drain across the street gets clogged. Water backs up, fills the street, you know. Yeah. Well, we only got another half hour to go here. Yeah. I'm glad to get some dry socks on. Uh, hold cold. it. Huh? Somebody coming out there. Yeah. All right, Keller, stand still. Who are you? What are you doing in my place? Police officers, you're under arrest. Watch it, Frank! Before. I haven't done anything. Those are your tools in the closet? You guys been snooping around. Better shake them, Frank. Yeah. I got a gun. You'll find it anyway. I got a gun. All right, give it to him. Yeah. 38, Joe. I got it. Yeah. Let's get out of here, huh? You got nothing on me. Let me call a lawyer. You'll be turning me loose in a couple hours. Oh, still killer. Yeah. What do you got here? Pretty wise. You guys don't miss a trick. No. 32 strapped to his leg, Joe. What are you doing with that, killer? Saying nothing until I see a lawyer. Where's your wallet? In my coat. Is that where you keep your money? You know a better place? All right, take it out. Lousy cops think they own you. You ever done any big time? I don't know what you're talking about. All right, come on, Keller. You know what's going on. You ever done any big time? Yeah. Where? Back east. For what? I'm robbery. You on parole now? None of your business. Now, look, we're going to find out anyway. Save yourself some time and us some trouble. Answer the question. So I'm on parole. What's that prove? Your parole officer know you're out here? Yeah. Didn't he tell you it's against the law for an ex-con to have a gun? He told me. And how come you got two of them? I drove out here. You need protection on a trip like that. How much money you got in your wallet there? I don't know. Oh, about how much? I haven't got the slightest idea. I always know how much I got. Maybe it makes a difference to you. Count it. What for? Count it. Fifty. Hundred. Hundred and fifty. Put it out on the table, will you, so we can both count it. Now let's try it again. Yes, four, seven. It uh, comes out three thousand and fifty-three dollars. You want me to count the change in my pocket too? Where'd you get the money? I worked for it. Where? None of your business. All right, Keller, let's go downtown. Frank, you want to get the tools? Yeah. Pick up the money, Keller. Put it back in your wallet. Look, suppose I just leave it there and walk out of here. Wouldn't I make it all you right? You know better than that. Now put it back in your wallet. It doesn't make any difference anyway. You guys got nothing on me, nothing you can hold me on. Yeah. Come on, Keller. Your hands behind you. Yeah. I'll get the tools, Joe. Right. Hey, how about my coat? Your what? A coat. All right, here. Now let's go. You guys, you're sure gonna feel pretty silly. Is that right? 
Sure, you got nothing on me. My lawyer will have me out in no time. He's a good lawyer. Yeah, well, he's going to have to be. Huh? To get you out of this one. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On June 14th, trial was held in Department 97, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Friends, there's lots to remember when you're planning a weekend or a vacation trip. Road maps, reservations, and, of course, a carton or two at Chesterfields. America's favorite two-way cigarette. You can't beat Chesterfields for taste and mildness. A really refreshing smoke every time. Take along plenty. Regular or king size. They satisfy. John Rudolph Keller was tried and convicted of robbery in the first degree, one count, and burglary in the first degree, six counts, and received punishment as prescribed by law. Robbery in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years. Burglary in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment for a period of not less than five years in the state penitentiary. America needs volunteers for the Civilian Ground Observer Corps. Let's face facts. The H-bomb and the long-range bomber have made intercontinental war possible. And hostile planes could penetrate our radar defenses unnoticed by flying between the radar cones at low altitudes. Civilian spotters are needed to fill these radar gaps, particularly on the east and west coasts and in northern state areas. If you're from teenage up, your country needs a few hours of your services each week for this vital work. To volunteer, get in touch with your local civil defense center. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Frazier. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Jonathan Hull, Herb Ellis, Jack Crucian. Script by John Robinson and Ben Alexander. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Filter tip smokers, this is it. L and M filters. At last, a filter tip cigarette with much more flavor. Much less nicotine. L and M's Miracle Tip contains alpha cellulose for effective filtration. It's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. Yes, this is it. As David Wayne puts it, L and M filters are just what the doctor ordered. Buy L and M filters, the light and mild smoke. <laughs> Dane Clark stars in Crime and Peter Chambers tonight on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs>